grew up around dogs. You know, family pets. But I've always wanted a dog of my own. Not one that my parents picked out, but one that I chose. Sometime, I don't know exactly when or where, my son Pat was dove hunting and he noticed a hunter who was in the same field he was in who had a little brown dog that was retrieving doves. So he walked over to the fella and uh, started asking him about the breed and uh, the fella told him that uh, the dog was a boy in Spanish. Back in February I went out to Mississippi for a month to spend time with my grandfather Mouse and my uncle Pat. It's where I met my first Boykin Spaniels, they, uh, they impressed me from the start. Uh, not with how they looked, but how they acted. And their personalities are incredible, like no other dog I've ever seen before. Uh, they're intelligent, but also they crave human affection. The Boykins do this funny thing where they they put their paws on you, they speak with their paws. So that it has to be on your leg or they'll, they'll touch your chest with their paws. And that Kate would touch my mouth. She put her paw on my face and she's like, speak to me, listen to me, pay attention, right, you know? I really like that a lot. A couple months after I got back from Mississippi, my Uncle Pat had another heart attack and he was in the hospital in New Orleans waiting for a heart transplant and my family flew me out there to be with my grandfather and try to help out as much as I could. A few days later he died and about a month after that Angus, my uncle's dog, got hit by a car. My uncle loved those dogs. He loved dogs in general. He was really great at training them. I remember when we took Angus and Molly to the beach one day in Ocean Springs, Mississippi, and let them run. Angus chased birds up and down that beach all day if you let him. He would go looking for the biggest stick that he could find and run after you, set it in front of you, and wait for you to pick it up and throw it for him. Okay. Travis put me down as a reference for a dog that he was uh, trying to adopt. The woman called me, this woman I guess from the adoption agency or whatever, and she was asking me in a very serious way um, if I thought that Travis would be responsible uh, for a dog or a responsible owner for a dog and my answer was simple and I guess she thought I was being a bit facetious but I was actually being you know honest and truthful I said well yes I think he would be a very responsible uh, parent as it were for the animal and I said if he's not I would kick his ass and that's really what it is because I think, you know, having a dog is like having a child. You really have to be responsible for it. And I think Travis is a very responsible person. So, you know what that means? It means I don't have to kick his ass. All right, so Travis put me down as a reference for um, this dog adoption. And when the lady called, she had a few questions for me. One of the questions being, if I were a dog, would I want Travis to adopt me? Now, obviously, that's a very strange question. I thought it was pretty funny. But, of course, Travis is my friend, so I said that he would be a great owner, and I definitely want him to have a new companion. Hello there. 
My name is Snickers and I am a four-year-old male Boykin Spaniel. I hope you love getting puppy kisses because I love to give them away. I am quite possibly the sweetest Boykin Spaniel you've ever met, which is a tall order, I know. My foster mommy says that I've never met a stranger and she's right. I am a little laid back for a Boykin Spaniel. I love a good game of fetch and am perfectly content to lie beside my foster daddy's feet afterwards. I love my foster mommy and daddy, but they aren't as good as having my own family. I know I will make my forever family very happy, and if you could look into my eyes, you would know it too. Do you think you might be my forever family? Hi Valerie, my name is Travis Mills. I have uh, submitted my application to the Boykin Rescue Society and been approved by uh, the Western Coordinator. I'm out in Arizona, but I was reading the profile for Snickers and I uh, would be really interested in talking with you um, about Snickers and um, just what, what, you know, just asking you some questions. I spoke with Snickers' foster mom on Saturday, a woman named Valerie in Georgia. She told me a lot about him, and she said that even though a lot of families have expressed interest in adopting him, that I honestly seem like the perfect fit, which was great to hear. But I'm worried, because she also said that they didn't really want to keep Snickers this long, and that they're looking for some to, someone to adopt him soon. See, I'm supposed to go out to Mississippi in October for my uncle's memorial service, and that's when I wanted to get a dog. I don't know if I can pull it off sooner than that. I'm moving into a new house, and I'm making a lot of films right now. I'm very busy. So I have a hard decision to make. Do I go out there? Do I find a way to go get Snickers now? Or do I wait and take my chances? Some other family might come along and, and be perfect for him too. My aunt says that a dog is a dog, but that's not true. Is a human a human? There's certain people, certain living things that we connect with more than others. It's been about a month, and in that time, I've moved into the house where hopefully the dog that I adopt will be living in with me and my roommate, Michael. I've contacted many foster parents about their dogs. First, there was Snickers who seemed like the perfect fit, but unfortunately right now he's suffering from heartworm disease and I'm not allowed to adopt him until he's cured. There's also Rhino, who is being fostered in South Carolina right now. He's a cute dog and I was very tempted to pursue adopting him, but for some reason I can just feel in my gut that it's not the right fit. But today, I spoke with a woman in Texas by the name of Amy about a dog named Kid. He's two years old, very active, affectionate, but also obedient. He honestly sounds like he would be the perfect companion for me. And now, after talking to Amy for 30 minutes to an hour about him, it's just a waiting game. There are some other people too that are interested in, in adopting Kid and Amy may choose them over me. That's a possibility I have to accept. So for now, I'm waiting to find out if Kid will be the dog that I adopt. And if so, then I'll drive to Texas to go pick him up. I got an email yesterday from the woman in Texas who has the dog kid that I wanted to adopt. She gave him to another family.
which is good. I, I hope she picked the right one. I really do. I feel like the really good things in life don't come easy. Maybe they shouldn't come easy. You gotta fight for them. You gotta struggle. I have to remind myself of that. But in the end, I'm happy it's that way. Just a few days after I heard back from Amy that I wouldn't be adopting kid in Texas, I got a call from Kathy, the woman who processed my application for adoption. She said that there was a four-year-old boykin in Oregon where she lives, that the man who owns him, John, is going to give him to the Humane Society unless he finds a good person to take him. She gave me John's number and I called him as soon as possible. The dog's name is Bandit. And I asked John just about every question I could possibly think of about him. He sounds like a good dog, a good companion. And after thinking about it for a few days, I made a decision. This is the dog I'm going to adopt. So this Saturday, I drive to Oregon, 21 hours on the road, to pick him up. And from there, he and I will drive across the country from Oregon to Mississippi to join my family for the memorial service for my Uncle Pat. It's going to be one heck of a journey. I'm ready. Last night, I left Arizona. I drove five hours to Las Vegas and then got too tired to keep going, so I laid down in the back seat of the car for about four hours and today I'm, I'm back on the road again. Sometime today I'll, I'll reach Oregon and tomorrow morning I'll pick up Bandit. If I could. So what I want to say is uh, to uh, anybody who's interested in a dog that would make them a perfect companion, I don't think you can go wrong with the boy can breed their marvelous dogs.